Have a pleasant day. Hope you all are fine. We are long back again to the classes in a variety manner. And these lockdown days I hope you might have enjoyed or I don't know whether you might have sitting worried. Anyhow, I hope that these lockdown days we have locked all the negatives and unlocked the positives. Yes, yes, it might be. So, we had unlocked the positives that we had a good relation with the family, good relation with nature and the many creative works we have developed in ourselves. So, all these positives have been developed in us and hope the same thing happened in you too. Yes, so we are again back. And now I am here to present the topic Lines Written in Early Spring, a poem of the unit 1 and it is written by William Wordsworth. We all are familiar with this poet. He is a poet of nature and he is known as the poet of nature. He has written many works, mainly his poems are everything related in nature with a simple language, that is an ordinary language. What language we use ordinary is being used in the poem. So, uh, everybody loved to read his poems and uh, he along with his companion Sa Samuel Taylor Coleridge has produced many works and especially this uh, William Wordsworth, he has written many works which has been prelude of him. And uh, in his all his poems, he uses a very simple language that is he admires nature that when we go through the lines, we to admire, we to feel the feeling of the poet what when he wrote it. So, here he has written a very wonderful poem lines written in early spring which is completely related with nature. So, the poet here the unnamed author sits under a tree and he is imagining all the wonders he is admiring the nature what is happening there. So, the poet comes to the feeling of the man who is, who is sitting under the tree and the poet explains that. Uh, he is sitting in the wilderness and he is admiring what is happening in the nature. So, he sees that there are many changes being happened in the nature. So, the poet feels worried. So, he want to go along with the miseries of the man and also the miseries of the nature. So, this has been happened because of the fault may be because of us, we human beings. Though we love nature, we are so selfish, we want to take everything for ourselves and not for the nature, we does nothing for the nature. Maybe some, some might be doing something, but many majority, we just absorb, we just gain our thing, gain everything for ourselves from nature. So, um, majority part of the nature is being destroyed. So, this is being felt by the poet and so he writes these lines, lines written in early spring. So, let me give a profile of the Wordsworth, so you will just hear it. William Wordsworth was a true literary pioneer. He defied the conventions of his time by insisting that poetry should express deep feelings about everyday experiences. In the process, he influenced a generation of poets and helped change the course of English poetry. Wordsworth was born in England's Lake District, a land of breathtaking scenery. Early in life, he suffered two tragedies, the sudden death of his mother when he was eight and the death of his father about five years later. The orphaned Wordsworth children were separated. William and his brothers boarded with a couple near the school the boys attended, and their sister Dorothy lived with relatives. Though Wordsworth grieved over the loss of his parents, he came to love school, the people of the Lake District, and the land. The passion he developed for poetry, for simple country living, and for the natural world were to influence him for the rest of his life. Wordsworth furthered his education at Cambridge University, graduating at the age of 21. His relatives wanted him to pursue a career in law or the church. He wanted to write and to travel. While visiting France, he became caught up in the spirit of the French Revolution, which he viewed as a struggle for social justice. He also fell in love with a French woman named Annette Vallon. Though he wanted to stay with her, lack of money forced him to return to England. The next few years were difficult ones for Wordsworth. 
He felt guilty about leaving Volan, disillusioned by the increasing violence in France, and disappointed by the poor critical response to his volumes of poetry, an evening walk, and descriptive sketches. When Wordsworth was in his mid-twenties, his fortunes changed. He inherited money from a friend, was given a cottage in the Lake District, and then reunited with his sister, who remained his dear friend and confidant for life. With her encouragement and that of his friend Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Wordsworth began to devote himself to writing poetry. At the age of 28, his reputation as a leading young poet was established with the publication of Lyrical Ballads, a collection that included his poems, lines composed a few miles above Tintern Abbey, and Coleridge's The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Wordsworth continued to write, and throughout his long life, which he spent in the Lake District with his sister and his wife Mary, when he was 73, he was named Poet Laureate of England. His masterpiece, The Prelude, a long autobiographical poem, was published after his death. Okay, I, I think that's something you have got about the author. That's a poet, William Wordsworth. And he is main in the literary circle. So, regarding other poets, we can consider William Wordsworth as one of the most famous and uh, important poet too. So, now coming to the poem, lines written in early spring. Um, he has written this poem uh, to that we have a soul, human beings have a soul, likewise the nature has a soul. So, these two souls are linked together and from this came the lines written in early spring. You listen to the poem with your textbooks just closed and I will just recite it. You will just go through the lines. Lines written in early spring, one of the great poets, poems of William Wordsworth shows us that nature and human being has a link with each other. That is, nature has a soul and human beings has a soul and these two souls are linked and that comes and that is the output of the poet that is the lines written in early spring. So, let me go through the lines of the poem. So, you will just listen to the poem with your books closed. Just it is being displayed here. So, you can just listen to it with the books closed. Lines written in early spring written by William Wordsworth. I heard a thousand blended notes while in a groove I sat reclined in that sweet mood when pleasant thoughts bring sad thoughts to the mind. To her fair works did nature link the human soul that through me ran and much it grieved my heart to think what man has made of man. Through primrose tufts in that sweet bower, the periwinkle trailed its wreaths, and it's my faith that every flower enjoys the air it breathes. The birds around me hopped and played, their thoughts I cannot measure, but the least motion which they made, it seemed a thrill of pleasure. The budding twigs spread out their fan to catch the breezy air and I must think do all I can that there was pleasure there. If this belief from heaven be sent, if such be nature's holy plan, have I not reason to lament what man has made of man? Hope you all have listened to the poem. Did you understand anything? It is a very simple poem, very simple lines. Did you get anything? Yes, something you have got. Yes, fine. So, this there are six stanzas with four quatrains. That is, quatrains means four lines with six stanzas. So, this poem right from the beginning, he says that he is going to the nature, he is sitting under a tree and he says that he is just being one along with the nature, he is being mixed along with the nature that is blended. He cannot be separate from the nature, he is being one among the nature. So, he is sitting under the tree, he is just enjoying the nature and he says that in the sweet thoughts of the past. 
So, he had many pleasant thoughts of the nature in the past and also now. So, he is just mixing all those things with him and he is sitting under the tree enjoying, admiring. And he says that his soul, the nature's soul are just being linked. So, it is very pleasant thing to just imagine. So, he is sitting there and he is, but suddenly when he is just being admiring the nature too, some grief is coming inside his mind, some sad thoughts which make him sad. He thinks of the thoughts that come to the mind as, there are many things that are destroying the nature that makes him feel. So, he is being grieved. And next thing is, he is just thinking of the primrose that is a flower and that sweet smell and the things which we keep in the wreath, everything. So, it is being used for happiness and for sadness. So, wreath is being used for funerals and the other situations too we use flowers. So, both situations are being just mixed together and he feels, he, he says that he is giving an importance to the nature that he is being considering the nature as a human being. He says that the air is enjoying what it breathes. So, he considers the uh, nature as a human being and he says as we breathe the nature also breathes. So, he consider the nature that it has a soul and we have a soul. So, both things are being connected and he feels that in the nature the birds, the plants, the flowers everything are enjoying, they are being hopped, they are playing, everything they are admiring. So, these things are happening regarding with animals, plants, birds, everything. But regarding with human beings, we just go into the nature, some go into the nature for enjoying, but some we gain something from nature, that is what we are destroying it. So, the point feels for that. And the budding, the twigs of the plants are being just stretching out there, uh, about branches like a fan that they too are enjoying, even though they are dried up, they are just spreading their wings to enjoy the nature. And they are along with the nature to catch the breezy air. They are just moving along with the nature. That is what is said. And how pleasure they feel it. And the point thinks that if we are in such a mood, we can create a heaven over there. And if this is, if this is the nature's plan, if this is the God's plan, why should we lament? Lament is why should we worry? So, Actually, God has created us to be one among with nature and we are just moving away from nature. So, that does not, that God does not uh, want from us. So, he says that we should come along with nature and if we are so, why should we lament? So, we have to repent of the things what we have made every day. Uh, that is the nature being inbuilt in us. Each and every day the things which we do should be recollected in the night. So, that is what the poet is doing here at the end. So, he is recollecting all the things what he has be what has been happening all these days. So, he thinks if I should come back, if I should repent, why should I lament? So, all those things we should come back, we should be in harmony with nature. So, that is what. So, I hope you have understood the poem. Come on children, you will just go through the lines with your books opened, just with a silent reading. Yes. Okay, hope you have completed. Hope you have enjoyed the poem, is it? If you are really enjoying the nature, you would have enjoyed the poem. So, uh, we, we could find there are many literary devices which add a beauty to the poem. So, we could find something. So, we found that there are six stanzas with four quatrains. So, each quatrain has a rhyme scheme. You know what is a rhyme scheme? Yes, that is what. Could you find out what is the rhyme scheme in the poem in each stanzas? The first stanza, can you find out what is the rhyme scheme? Yes, what you said is right, it is A B A B. So, in other poems too, can you? Yes. The, the lines, alternate lines rhyme with each other. So, same thing happens in the other stanzas too. So, the whole rhyme scheme of the poem is A B A B. 
then we could find some other literary devices that is as I said before. So, the, uh, the air is breathing I saw. So, he said that uh, enjoys the air it breathes. So, that is air is enjoying the air which breathes. So, the air is considered as a human being. So, that is considered as hu uh, personification to the fair works did nature link and it is my faith that every flower enjoys the air it breathes. The budding twigs spread out their fan, never will a twig spread its fan, spread its branches, no it cannot. But the poet considers the twig as a human being and he says that it is spreading out its branches. So, all these things shows that the poet is giving more importance to nature, he is considering the nature as a human being. So, that is what the literary device personification is being said here. So, many we could see some three lines there, three four lines being related with personification. And one other literary device is imageries that we find compulsorily in the poem. In all the poems we could find imageries which gives a beauty more beauty. So, we know that there are five imageries related with our sense organs. So, we could see that there are visual images here and auditory images too. So, visual images are the grove, the green bower, the flowers, primrose, prewinkle, budding twigs. All those things we could see with our eyes are related with visual images. Next one is auditory, something we could hear. So, that is I heard a thousand blended notes, something he is hearing. So, the notes from nature he is hearing. So, that is what he could hear that auditory. That is he could hear all things happening in the nature, he could enjoy it with his ears. That is what auditory. So, that is what the imageries, two imageries we could find here is one is visual and the auditory. Next one is alliteration, one other important device we could find in all the poems is an alliteration. So, in all these poems we would have seen last classes, previous classes we would have met it. So, you know what is an alliteration? Man has made of man, can you find out the alliteration there? Yes, M is the alliteration because man has got M, maid has got M and again man has got M. So, that M is the alliteration there, that is the consonants in the same line, it is a beginning letter, beginning consonant letter in the same line rhymes together, being same, that is what alliteration. So, all these imageries, many such imageries are there, many such literary devices we could find in the poem. So, we could find that personification is there, imageries that is visual and audit auditory, then uh, alliterations and the rhyme scheme. So, hope you could have understood something. So, can I ask you some questions? So, that it may be clear for you some more. But what is the expression I sat reclaimed indicate the poet state of mind? Can you guess something? If you really enjoyed the poem, if you really understood it, you could get the answer. It is there in the poem. What does the expression I sat reclined indicate the poet's state of mind? Yes, somebody can guess. Yes, the answer is he is sitting relaxed, his state of mind is calm and he is in a pleasant mood. So, that made him sat reclined in the under the tree. Okay. So, next one, why does a poet feel sad while reclining in the group? You could have got the answer. Why is he feeling sad? So, yes, you have guessed is right. It is being the human beings are not in harmony, they are destroying nature. So, it makes him feel. So, he says that the flowers, the birds, the plants all are in harmony with each other, but not we. That is the thing. So, we are in unharmony with nature, disharmony. We just want to destroy the nature. So, that makes him feel. So, that is what he feeling, he is feeling sad. Okay. Then, uh, let us hear to the recitation of the poem next. So, it might be made some more clear for you. I heard a thousand blended notes when in a grove I sat reclined in that sweet mood when pleasant thoughts 
bring sad thoughts to the mind. To her fair works did nature link the human soul that through me ran, and much it grieved my heart to think what man has made of man. Through primrose tufts in that green bower the periwinkle trailed its wreaths, and tis my faith that every flower enjoys the air it breathes. The birds around me hopped and played, their thoughts I cannot measure, but the least motion which they made it seemed a thrill of pleasure. The budding twigs spread out their fan to catch the breezy air, and I must think, do all I can, that there was pleasure there. If this belief from heaven be sent, if such be nature's holy plan, have I not reason to lament what man has made of man? Okay, children, I hope you have got something from the poem, because you might have a love towards the nature. So now, uh, you, if you, you are having your textbooks with you, is it? So you'll open it. Behind the, at the last, the end of the page, you could see some four activities there. So the answers I've given while I'm saying the poem. So there are first activity is something about the mentality of man. So we have, there is a sentence often said, the first stanza and the last stanza, he has asked that what man has made of man. So regarding that, can you say what is the mentality of man? That is what to be written in the first activity. And the second activity, as I showed you the table, all the personifications, all the literary devices you have to just trace out. This personification, imagery, alliteration and rhyme scheme. All things I have explained it, so you could have got it. And next one is, uh, we could see that our surroundings are being destroyed. So, uh, we could uh, present, uh, the present day, the nature is being threatened to. So, we could uh, say that, uh, what is happening, what, why this nature is being threatened, what makes the nature threatened. So, we can just, uh, from our thoughts from our experience or from other sources, you can just trace out something and you will just write it in your notebooks. And if you want, if you are so creative, you can write it as a poem or just a narration or just an essay, whatever it is. Here the activity is writing a poem. If you are so creative, some might be uh, in a, capable of writing poems immediately. So, if you want, you can just trace out in the form of a poem or in a form of a narration. So, if you want, you can write it as a poem, that is fine. And the last activity which is being given you for, given to you as an assignment. So, uh, it is quite natural that uh, soon after we complete a poem, we write an appreciation of the poem. If you want, I will make it. Uh, um, in a capsule manner that uh, there are five steps for writing an appreciation. Let us in the first step, in the first stanzas, you need not write a uh, long one, just a small stanza, but uh, for your easiness, I am just giving you it in a five steps. That is in the first stanza, you can write it as was the name of the poem and the name of the poet. That is the first stanza. So, if you want, you can add something to the poet, if you know about him. So, that is what uh, the profile, some informations regarding the point, if you want you can add it, otherwise just write the name of the poem and the name of the poet. In the next stanza, we can just write the summary of the poem. So, whatever you have uh, got through the lines, stanzas, you can just add it in the second stanza. And in the third stanza, you can write all the literary devices that is being seen in the poem. Uh, I have said that personification is there, alliteration is there, rhyme scheme is there, imageries are there. So, all those things can be added in the third stanza. And in the fourth stanza, you can just give what message is being given from the poet's part, whether the topic is apt to the poem and what message is being given through the poem to us. That is, that can be included in the fourth stanza. And in the last stanza, you can say that if some modification should be made, whether any other defects you have found or any other uh, positives you have found, all those things can be added in the 
fifth stanza. So, while writing it may it will give you an easiness for writing an appreciation. So, the assignment given us attempt an ap appreciation of the poem in your words. Hope you can do that and if you want if you feel some doubt in this you can watch if you want to see this class again you can watch it in the goodness YouTube channel and you can clear your doubts there. Thank you.